So, I haven't done a video for a while, and this is why. <laughs> we uh, picked up a Wildcat Double X. Thought I would do a short little review. We got uh, about 250K on it now. And holy crap, man, what a beast. We love this machine. Suspension is freaking phenomenal. Those Fox adjustable shocks, my God, amazing. So we still have the 900, which is an amazing trail machine, but anybody who has a 900 trail knows that they're not the best for jumping or going really fast well this thing is good for both <laughs> it's fast the suspension is amazing this Yamaha triple 1000 hauls like I can't even believe like um, I know there's uh, faster machines out there but I couldn't imagine, uh, you know, you got to get into the turbos to start beating this thing. This, uh, it's filthy right now. It's been pressure washed twice. You got to give it a buff. This Robbie Gordon suspension, man, is crazy. Love it. Haven't, uh, experienced any of the, uh, axle issues people are having. Um, I'm assuming that's because the, uh, my dealer set it up properly and they did actually have a machine that ended up with those, uh, long axles in it and they had to change it. So I imagine that's where their experience came from setting the axles, but man, this thing is super, super cool. Love these full doors, finished inside and out. Does a really, really good job of uh, keeping you clean and keeping the crap out of the cab. Very basic cab, but has everything you need in that little digital display. We haven't done anything to it. I. Uh, Picked up a front bumper at a clearance place by the airport in Toronto. 130 bucks, I guess. I don't know what happened. They fell off a plane or something. We got the half windshield and the soft top. The dealers around me are uh, very short on accessories for these things. Anyway, um, we've put this thing through hell in 250k or miles i don't know what it is um it's just been awesome it can, obviously can't go the places the 900 goes just because of the width like i've had that 900 down every atv trail there is and we can finagle our way through pretty much anything and this thing that extra 14 inches cuts off a lot of the riding areas for us but man it's a good trade-off for the suspension so yeah we've uh, rock crawl straight up rock faces the four-wheel drive has worked great the locker's awesome the uh when you're in regular four-wheel drive, the steering stays the same pretty much. You can feel it pulling a little bit with the four-wheel drive. When you put the locker on, it uh, wants to just go in a straight line. But obviously, you're flicking the locker on and off. I don't particularly like the switch they have for it. It's that little rocker down there. It's nice from two-wheel drive to regular four-wheel drive open diff but for the locker you got to flick that little switch 
and then flick it again, which is a pain in the ass when you're uh, on the trail and coming up to a almost vertical rock face and you got gloves on and you're trying to move that little lever down and flick it one more time. But I guess that's just so you don't accidentally drive around with your front diff locked. I don't see how you would because you would know because it doesn't want to turn at all when everything's locked up. These behemoths have been working awesome. We've, uh, like I said, rock crawling, uh, major bumpy trails, no problem. This thing soaks up everything. Those annoying, I'm sure you've all been on the trails where it looks like a rock farm and this thing sucks up everything. And at the end of the day, you feel like you just drove around in a car for six hours. Where this guy, same situation, your freaking ass is sore, your back is sore, and you're actually exhausted from getting rattled around in that cab for a long day of riding in those same situations. But the little 900 can go places this thing can never go. <laughs> Mind you, we've had this down a few narrow trails and have scratched up all the fenders and you know the fenders are nice for keeping you clean but they're also uh you know you cringe every time you fold one up against a, a tree going down a tight trail but that's all part of it right anyway for what we do like fire like running fire roads too this thing's a rocket ship they got it uh Governed, uh, I guess, at about, oh, geez. It's, I think it's 71 or 72 miles an hour. It shuts down, and it's still pulling hard at those speeds. And the fire road, on the fire roads, man, it handles like a freaking dream. Like a dream. It's, uh, it just, I don't know. Like coming coming out of the fifty inch machine to uh this sixty or no what is a sixty four inch machine just the added stability is amazing like for drifting and uh doing donuts and stuff like that like I would never ever you know you can do them in this thing, but boy. You uh, can flip it pretty easy. So, power wise, the triple just hauls. You know, I ride with uh, guys with XP 1000s, and uh, you know, I'm not, I don't know if this is faster, but it, it hauls. So, yeah, we've done. Like I say, the fire roads, flat out drifting, amazing handles. Feels like you're in a little champ truck. And I think that's what Robbie Gordon was going for. The, uh, on the flat out rock crawling, it's amazing. It freaking, man, I don't think there's anything it wouldn't go through if you locked the diffs. I haven't done much mudding. I don't like mudding. I like mudding. I don't like cleaning the machine after I go mudding. <laughs> it just gets into everything, as you guys know. If I had a specific mud machine, maybe I'd be more into it. But I just don't like what it does to the machine, filling the rad and filling every nook and cranny with mud. You know, some guys love it. Me, I'm, uh, I like the ass puckering, rock crawling and the flying down fire roads and that that's uh what i enjoy and this thing is amazing for both those things never thought in a million years i'd ever have an arctic cat <laughs> or textron i guess now but uh this thing man it changes your whole view on that whole arctic cat thing because this thing is completely 
different machine. Like it is built, it's so robust and tough. Like it's just, you do a comparison to this side by side with any of the other machines in its category and uh, you know where the extra weight comes from. It's all in the beefing up of all the components. Like it's just, everything is just not overkill, but what you need for a machine to stand up to what you're going to put it through if you use your machine to its potential. And this thing is made to be used to its full potential. Like huge rad, double fans, all nice TIG welded radiator, huge, huge power steering, electric power steering motor, like just awesome. Double fans on your on your rad, like just everything is so robust. Like those A arms are just massive, huge Fox shocks in it. Like everything is just massive and awful, awesome. The double shear uh, joints on the uh, on the suspension here, double shear. Like it's just everything is so so robust i do have the rattly uh, sway bar issue it seems to have quieted down the last ride out but i did get the upgrade kit from textron it was uh 48 bucks canadian 47 bucks canadian something like that i'm gonna put that on even though it seems to quiet it down now, for some reason, I don't know. These crazy ass Robbie Gordon swing arms, like man, stainless steel braided brake lines everywhere, huge brakes, 15 inch wheels, 30 inch tires from stock, like come on, just awesome. Like these guys built, a machine like you guys know what we only people who side by side know what we put these things through we put them through hell and this thing stands up man like uh crazy like it's at the end of the trail guys you know bent a arms and broken a arms and this thing you know is none the worse for the wear except for a few scratches and stuff like I just can't believe it. I love it. It's amazing. It's, uh, you know, it's a completely different machine than that in the sense that this thing can fit down ATV trails, the 900. This thing, there's no way in hell. You know, they both have their purpose. And I, you know, I was on the fence. You know, maybe I'll just get an XP1000, stay in the Polaris game, but... Any of you guys that are, you know, looking at an XP-1000 or a non-turbo uh, Can-Am, like, go look at one of these things, man. You'll know where the few extra bucks goes when you look at them. Everything is just, everything is how you, if you bought a Razor and bulletproofed it, this is what it would end up weighing to make sure that you didn't break anything at the end of the day like it's just crazy i have it all everything opened up from washing it and i definitely missed a few spots everything there's a cover for there obviously the hood's off and the uh the carrying box is out which is absolutely massive everyone's been saying how horrible these seats are i've been loving them they're super comfortable compared to the razor seats as far as i'm concerned but that's all a personal preference yeah not a whole lot going on in here just the Articat gauge cluster i think they've used that on the snowmobiles for a few years you got your headlight settings the first one just runs your leds front and back new little led strips and then your low beam high beam and then you got your ignition down there and your uh, four-wheel, two-wheel drive diff lock selection. And that's it, man.
Oh, and it has tilt steering too, which is nice. Yeah. So, gripes about it. Uh, I don't know. I think this, for us guys that run in the Canadian woods, I think this could have been cut off about here. <laughs> Help us get through some of those tight spots. Um, I love that they put everything up here for your intakes. And you think, oh, that's amazing. But you go down here and they put the belt exhaust down here. So I don't understand why you would exhaust the belt there and then have everything else up here. I know they're, you know, for clear, clean air up here, sure. But let's lift that up there too you know, for deep water crossings and stuff, you know. But anyway. That, that'll be a project for later. I don't know what mods I'm going to do to this thing yet. I've been, uh, you know, thinking, what can I do to the cage? Well, shit. Uh, do I want to mess with a cage that's already race certified? Probably not. But maybe a rack and a tire carrier type thing will be a project for later. We'll see. Um yeah so that's what i've been doing ripping this thing and man what a treat it's been i was kind of disappointed i was out we had a big ride and we had some atvs go uh one direction and the side by sides went the other direction to the wider trails and if i would have had my Polaris 900 trail with me I could have went with the ATVs no problem no second thoughts because I know that thing will fit through every gate and down every ATV trail there is you know that's the trade-off you know big suspension or fit down everything and have terrible suspension well I shouldn't say terrible it's it's good for what it is. You know, if Polaris would have put some nice uh, adjustable piggyback shocks in this thing, it would have been a hell of a lot better. But for what it is, it is good. And I still love this that machine just for the fact of getting down the ATV trails and be able to be on a side-by-side. -side. Anyway, that's just a quick review. This thing is unstoppable i don't know why it's so unstoppable maybe because it weighs 1800 pounds i have no idea but holy crap i don't even you know i couldn't imagine what it would take to stop this thing and if you did stop it you'd probably need a helicopter to get the goddamn thing out anyway i'll uh post some stuff that i'm gonna do to this thing maybe uh a winch, custom winch mount, something like that. Do a little uh, fabrication video. And then we'll see what we're going to do with the Polaris. I'm thinking uh, I'm going to go super skinny on the Polaris. I'm going to put the stock doors back on it. I'm going to take the wheel spacers out and get it super skinny for going down the ATV trails. Since I got this now, I may as well make that trail specific atv trail specific kind of machine i'm even debating if i'm going to put the stock uh wheels with the stock offset and maybe put those tires on it let me know what you guys think you know but with with the the these with the diesel offset wheels and textron tires it does fit I haven't ran into any situations where I can't get down an ATV trail with it. So maybe just leave it that way and go skinny on the doors and stuff. Anyway, that's just a quick little review. I should uh, post some riding footage. Maybe get around to that or see if I have a couple videos. But yeah. Textron Wildcat Double X is a freaking beast. 
Never thought I'd see the day where I had one of these in my garage, but here it is. <laughs> Take care.